x coordinate, y coordinate uh, to point. So if we go here and we can go click on geoprocessing, I have geoprocessing over here as a tab. If you don't, you can click here on view and there's geoprocessing there. Click on that and it opens up the geoprocessing uh, window here. And sometimes you need to let Arc think a lot. It struggles sometimes. There we go. So x y uh, x y to line creates new creates new geodetic lines. No, we want x y table to point. So input table x y table to point. We just searched for that. Click on browse there, and we want to find our file. And it says attribute table. Now the question is, why is it not seeing? Exercise two, it's not seeing it. <clears throat> Let's click on catalog and then if we go to exercise two there and we click on refresh, there we go. Go back to geoprocessing and then we try there again. There we go, there it is. Click on OK. And then the output uh, output features. Um, okay, so table to point. I don't think I specified the instructions to change the name. Oh, I don't. I'm just going to save it uh, in the default in, uh, location with the default name. The X field uh, is going to be our easting. The Y field is going to be the northing, and the coordinate system is going to be the current map, which becomes. Uh, so we ref 99TM in our case here. So now we can click on Run. And it shouldn't take too long, frankly. Do, do, do. There we go. Obviously importing four points uh, into a modern GIS can take quite a long time. Right, so do you see anything? Probably not. Um, what we can do is right click on that uh, and go zoom to layer. Uh, it's still quite difficult to really see anything, uh, but actually there is a point, but they're, they're, they're not terribly easy to see. So I think the next thing in the instructions is to restyle them. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll click there and we'll go to Symbology and if we click on that we can give it a new symbol. Let's just give it that symbol Yeah. And then what have we done there? So now these should uh, zoom to the layer. There we go. They're a little easier to see. So we've now imported uh, four points that define the area that we're going to map. That's great. They sort of defi they define the four corners. So this is a way of getting data in uh, to ArcGIS Pro. Why have we done this? Uh, to illustrate exactly that point. So that was a nice and simple way of getting some point data into ArcGIS Pro. Uh, there wasn't too much difficulty there. Just create the CSV file, put in the coordinates, and we can actually extend the CSV table to contain lots of attributes and, and all sorts of things uh, if we want to. Uh, but we, we want an area. So if we go back to the instructions, uh, the next section uh, starts to look perhaps a little more scary. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create uh, a so-called GeoJSON file. And if you read through this, you can see that uh, JSON is a format that's used with JavaScript, uh, website uh, language, basically. Also used for lots of other things nowadays um, through Node.js. Doesn't matter. Um, but what we have is uh, a GeoJSON file here. As a, it's a text file. Let's just, first of all, let's just copy all of that. Let's just copy only that. Uh, Ctrl C, and then we want uh, Notepad++, which of course I have 
closed, so we'll try and find that again. Um, down here, and there we go, Notepad++. Plus plus. And we can, uh, let's just open a new file there and click uh, Control V to paste that in. So when we're in uh, Notepad++, plus plus, uh, it has um, a nice feature. You can see that this curly bracket up here and this curly bracket up here are both red. So when I'm standing next to this one, it tells me where the opening bracket for this was. So between that curly bracket and that curly bracket, we're defining a thing. Um, similar in a way to last week with, with the XML format, KML, that we open a thing and close a thing with some symbol. Now in, uh, in the XML, KML format, the, th the thing that was being opened was actually specified and uh, its, its type was given well, it's not its type, sorry. It's the, the 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 sort of thing that it was was given in the opening uh, in the opening symbol, so to speak. Uh, GeoJSON doesn't work in the same way uh, as such. It's uh, you can specify, you can give the 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 type, uh, or sorry, the, the the sort of thing that you're looking at uh, as a as a as a as a word here. That's kind of very similar in, in many respects. But what we can see here is that we have this curly bracket defines a thing. And then we have these square brackets, and they uh, are generally speaking used to define lists of things. Uh, what is a list? Well, it's exactly like what, what do you think it is. It's a list of for one thing and then another thing and another thing. Sometimes a list can be empty. Sometimes a list can contain one thing. It's a list of one thing, uh, but that that's okay. But what we see here in this structure, in uh, we have uh, a name defining what's coming now. This is sort of uh, like a, a column header, if you like. It's not a, it's not going to be represented as a column, but it, it it works in a similar way. This is the sort of thing that we have. Uh, the type is a feature collection. The name of that feature collection is going to be area poly. We can see it's the 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 name of the same thing because we're still in this same curly bracket and it has a CRS, a coordinate reference system uh, that is like this. Uh, now we have these curly brackets again so if I put the marker there you can see that gets closed there so all of this belongs to to that name there. All They're all part of that thing and once we're in there we've got this type here so on and so forth and we can build up uh, an object in this way so we have a feature here the, the, the sort of vector thing that we're looking at, type, feature, properties, and here we have this sort of ID and the geometry type, and this is going to be a polygon, it's a multi-polygon for the sake of it. Um, and then the next thing that's coming is the coordinates, and we can see that it's a list. Uh, and the reason we have a list of list of lists here, if I mark that, is because it's a multi-polygon. But essentially what we have here is a um, a list of lists. This defines our polygon here, and this is a list of coordinates. Yeah. So each coordinate, each point, is represented by two coordinates. So they're listed. Uh, so here's a list of two coordinates. We could have a three-dimensional uh, thing, so there will be three in each list. But here's a list of coordinates for the first point. And the next object in this list here, this outer list, uh, is this point, a list of two coordinates and so on and so forth. We build up this, this whole list here is one polygon and this belongs to uh, one uh, part of the uh, of an object and then here we have the list of the, the objects in that. And then we close everything off afterwards. Everything has to be uh, closed off uh, by these closing brackets of the correct type. So that's, that's, that's how, what that looks like. If you didn't understand that, if you don't want to understand that, that's understandable. This is a bit heavy going for an introductory course. Um, so basically just copy this into a text file and save it. Uh, but what it's done is it's created a vector object using the GeoJSON format with these coordinates. They, these are the same coordinates as in our CSV file, which was much shorter. But now they've been given in such a way as to define a vector object that is a polygon. Uh, 
which is quite important for what we're going to do, reasonably important for what we're going to do. So now we're going to save this as our area underscore poly dot geojson. So let's do that. Let's save this. Uh, and we're in the right location. And we said area underscore poly dot geojson. And then we'll uh, press save there. So that's done. We can then, if we look in our explorer, not that one, let's actually close that window. We go to explorer, and here we can see this, this GeoJSON file there. Uh, Windows doesn't really know how to open this, um, so it's just got a sort of standard icon there, but this is a file of some sort. 